Welcome you and call to order the August 26, 2016 Port Orchard City Council regular meeting. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Okay, do we have any uh, proposed amendments to tonight's agenda? Ms. Lucorelli. I would like to have item 4B removed from the consent agenda and added to the business items to 7G. That was 4D? 4B, like in butterfly. B. The meeting, B. yeah. The okay. me meeting minutes oh. of August 9th. All okay. right. I, may I go on to another one also? Yeah. Or you Just to write this one down first. Okay, thank you. So we're, let's deal with this one amendment first here. So okay. we've got a motion and a second to add the meeting minutes from August 9th to the business items. It's item 7G. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there another one? I do have another one. I'd like to add an, an item to the consent agenda. It would be item 4E. Business. I'm sorry. Oh, bit, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I had mis... Okay, I misunderstood. Uh, okay, so I'm adding it to the business items, and it is going to be the um, Port Orchard Regional Decant Facility Retrofit Change Order Number 2. So we're going to be adding that as item 7H. Thank you. Change order for the decant facility. I've got a motion to add that as business item 7H. Seven. I have a second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Hearing none. Item 7H. Mr. Clausen. Mayor, I'd like to add a, a presentation item from the uh, Roger Kenshin and the Saints Car Club. So it would be 5A, I guess. Okay. So we have a uh, presentation added to as 5A. Uh, so there's a motion to add uh, the Saints Car Club as a presentation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So we have a presentation now at 5A. <clears throat> Any other amendments to the agenda? Okay. Hearing none is we are on to approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Ashby. Yes, I will move to approve the agenda as amended. Second. second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda is approved. We are on to citizens' comments. Are there any comments on any items on the agenda? Yes, Ms. Middleton. Good evening. Um, I wanted to reference the items on the um, business items where we speak about the building purchase for the extra space. And I know we had a consultant for that, but it also dovetails in with a concern that I've had with um, the, the failing parts of this building. And I'm just wondering if we're going moving forward on that in addition to this, in that I understood that the windows were leaking and it's been a concern for at least two budgets. And in my head, I'm thinking if it, if it continues on and we get deterioration, we've got a bigger problem. So I was just wanting to flag that in addition to um, going forward with the purchase. Yes, and to answer your question, September work study will have a presentation on the space analysis and the consultant's supposed to have the um, recommended fixes for the building so that we can uh, budget, potentially budget for some of those. Ah, very good, thank you. Yes, Ms. Johnson. Mary Filtz, 1050 Hill Avenue. I want to say again that I object and strongly that you take some of those parking spaces away from the parking lot downtown so that people can't park down there. Now, I, I talked to you, Mayor, about this. 
and you said you were going to take away a certain amount, I, 36 or 56 or something, and put grass in there. And we need the parking spaces much, much more than we need a grass down there. Those people that I, that you mentioned that park right up to the walkway and people can't get by easily, I did not find that. I've been down there two or three times to check on that. And people are not parked up so close to the walkway that they, people can't get by. If you need to put a cement park, park, park pathway there, well, you could make the buffer so that they, their, their bumpers would touch that and wouldn't get into that. But to take those spaces away from the, so people don't have a place to park downtown is, in my estimation, is very poor planning because we need those sparking, parking spots. Thank you, thank you for your comments. But just to point of order though, the, the first citizen comments period is for items only on the agenda. And there's a second period for, for, other, for other comments. So just go just in the future. Now say that again. So the first comment period for things only on the agenda. The only CD, on the agenda. The second comment period is for any comments for, for the items like just you spoke to here this evening. Oh, sorry about that. That's I'll okay. I remember that. No problem. <clears throat> Other comments on items on the agenda this evening. Okay, seeing none, we'll close the first citizen comment period. We are on to the consent agenda. A motion to approve the consent agenda. Mr. Clausen. Mayor, I move to approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. A motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as amended. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the consent agenda is approved. <clears throat> Mr. Jensen, we are on to your presentation of the crews. <clears throat> My name is Roger Jensen, the Saints Car Club, and I just want to thank the council for the opportunity to address you this evening and to make a few comments about the cruise that was held on the 14th. Without your support and the support of the, your police department, your public works, we couldn't host this, this uh, show every year. And the same thing goes for the EMTs and South Kitsap Fire and Rescue. We get tremendous support from all of you, and that's the only way we can do this. This was the largest show to date that we had, that we've ever put on. Um, Van Valist and Perkowitz did this for 10 years, and then it got too big for them, and they turned it over to our car club 19 years ago. So this was our 19th year, 29th year of the event. And uh, we had over 650 cars. Now, our car club shows our cars, but we do not judge our own cars, but we do count them. So we had over 650 cars that were registered and then a few that came in that just chose to be part of it but not register and not pay the fee and then we had an estimated 20 to 22,000 people walk through the show in a day what they do they take a grid and you count a certain amount of people in the grid you go back an hour later count that again and that's how they estimate the people uh, I got a call from Kareen Hayjack Johnson down at the Port Orchard Public Market yesterday and she said this was her best day ever in the restaurant, and the sandwich fellow in there also said the same thing. And I've gotten calls from various other merchants and also the antique shops that this was their biggest day, including Amy's and a restaurant and all of them. What we did was, a week before the event, we walked to every eatery in Port Orchard and asked them for their hours of operation and their specials for that Sunday. And then our MC announced all of the places and the locations and their specials and their times of opening all during the event. And I think that probably contributed to some of that. We hire, because Kitsap Transit doesn't run on Sundays, we hire two shuttle buses through the airporter. And they reported to me that they carried over 1,400 passengers between the park and ride at the courthouse and the park and ride up by the armory and then they swung into the high school and then down so that's quite a few people that parked in other places and rode in on the buses to alleviate the parking downtown the ferry boat captain uh, called me and he said that they carried over 800 passengers to and from port orchard that's a total so a lot of people are coming in by boat and by by bus to see this event uh, we had a few little glitches like any event will have um, but nothing major that we're aware of. We hope to work with Fathoms to uh, 
expand the number of available spaces. We ran out of spaces. We did use a few on Bay Street, but um, we're going to work with them on this, and, and we've even entertained the idea with them to take over the street fair someday when they're ready. And they want to do their 50th, and then I think they're going to maybe give it up. But we can make that all work if, if they choose to do that. We've been contacted by South Kitsap Helpline, by Jennifer, and they want to uh, put on a 3 or 5K run in conjunction with the crews. And we don't have any problem with that, but they're going to have to work that out with the city and the organizers and so forth to get all the details. But they would do that in the morning and, and end up down someplace like where St. Vinny's is, someplace in there. But that would bring people into town also. So we don't mind that at all. I want to give a special thanks to the mayor for being a VIP presenter at our award ceremony. He welcomed people uh, that were sitting in the grandstand there at the gazebo to the city of Port Orchard and, and to the crews. We gave out over 60 trophies to various categories, so it was a wide, a wide uh, award ceremony. And then the Best of Show was presented by Kitsap Bank, who's our major sponsor. We have about 20 legacy sponsors, and they're the ones that donate a majority of the money, and then we sell the uh, trophies sponsors, uh, the, the sponsorships for those also. Again, thanks for the support, and we look forward to working with you next year. Our club sincerely hopes that, the count, that we're fulfilling the council goals in bringing people to a family-friendly event in Port Orchard, and it's also a financial benefit to all the local <coughs> businesses. Uh, that's my report on the cruise, and again, we appreciate all your support. Uh, I'm working with Cindy and with the mayor on, uh, on donating on behalf of the car club a Christmas tree, um, the foot to be decided by probably 35 or more feet. Eulen Tree Farms has agreed to, to donate a tree to us, and we will donate it to the city. And uh, we'll work out all the details, but that'll be coming a little later. But so um, we also work with Helpline. We donated over 700 hours, man hours, during Thanksgiving and Christmas, giving out food and gifts to people in need. And then we have a program at the high school for automotive scholarships. We do backpacks for kids, salmon for soldiers, where John or uh, Rob Ensley takes people out uh, that are back veterans that have PTSD out fishing. And so we do, we're not just a good old boys club. We do a tremendous amount of stuff in the community. And we're very proud of that. We want to thank you because without the council mayor's office, we couldn't do that. So if there's any questions about the cruise or anything that somebody <coughs> observed, um, I'd even comment on the bikinis if you'd like me to that were down there that <laughs> if you need it. We, we are going to notify. We got a couple comments, negative comments, and you can't hardly say to who can come to the cruise and who didn't. They really didn't do anything legal, but we don't feel that fits a family uh, event. The fellow that brought them has uh, a business in Seattle, entertainment business. He had a Ferrari that he brought over, and he brought two of his employees. And they walked through the show, and, and it just wasn't the best thing. So we're going to contact him and ask him not to do that next year. But I thought I'd address that before somebody else did. But <laughs> it's just one of those things. You know, we can't pick and choose who comes, but we can certainly uh, stick to the family-friendly environment. So are there any questions of, of me before I go? Yes, sir. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for that event. It's one of the f most fun events I've ever been to. Thank you. Uh, secondly, I'd like to ask you, can you do this every month? And <laughs> <coughs> we, need, we need this every month. I'm not the only one who works on this, but some of it I start in November, and then from April on, it's daily, clear up until the day that we Oh, I believe it. It takes a lot of coordination. We have 65 members in the club, you know, and just like anything, you get a, a percentage that want to do all the work, but it's just part of the deal. But thank you. Um, this was our biggest one, and, and we want to continue this. So, well, My other question for you is, uh, did I win a trophy for my car? I had to leave if, early. I'm just If there was a sticker on your headlight, you did. <laughs> <coughs> Do you have a car entered? I did. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, well, we have about 10. We have a fellow that's in charge. Take another minute, and then I'll get out, off here. We have a fellow that's in charge of the judging as we do parking and registration and all that, the chairman. And he has between 10 and 12 fellows that go out and look at chrome, upholstery, uh, rehab, uh, restorations, new, used, you know, everything about these cars. And we stagger those guys every year, so we try to give as much broad coverage as we can. 
And in judging, it's kind of in the eyes of the beholder. There are certain qualifications and certain criteria we use, but we try to make it as broad as possible. We're probably the only car show that gives out that many trophies because we want to credit and award as many people as possible. We, get, we keep all the zip codes of all the people. We send out postcards, 700 of them, and we keep all the zip codes so we know where people are coming from. And you'd be surprised, all the areas across the Sound and all over that come here. Port Angeles, we get a few from California once in a while and so forth. So, But it's the largest single one-day event on the whole peninsula for an event so, of any kind. Yeah. Okay, anything else? And I'll get out of here. Just a second. Council Mayor, I just wanted to commend you not only for pulling off a successful event and for helping the community out in so many ways, but also for your intelligent approach to helping the local businesses during that, that day. Well, we want to everything. work with them because oh. it's, it, you know, we still have a few businesses, as you know, that, that want to park in front of their store on Sunday and they don't want to open up either. So we're going to have to continue <laughs> to work. No, I'm not being critical. I'm just saying that's a fact mm -hmm. and we need to continue to work with them. But we're trying to do our part by contacting the eateries and the other businesses, uh, the antique shops. They said they had a good business. And so we want to continue to do that because it, it, it benefits all of us. And the more we can do, the more we can do in the community. So. Congratulations. But thank you for letting me come tonight and, and uh, make this presentation. You can't get away yet. Oh, that's all right. I just don't you. want to take too much time from your meeting. Mr. Clausen. Well, I, I, like Scott, wanted to compliment you on doing this every year. I know there's been sunny days and there's been cloudy days, yeah. and that certainly has an effect on the, on the turnout. But this year I thought was extremely uh, uh, packed with not only vehicles but spectators and i think you guys did a great job i look forward to the 20th for you guys next year so thank you thank yeah you. This, that'll that'll be a big one for us but yeah thank you very much and thank the council i have one more for you sure. is that uh hopefully we don't have a gravel lot at 640 bay street next year but okay. if, we, if we do you that space is available to you also Good. for whether it's your vendors or, or what it is probably tough to get cars in there but yeah. uh, uh no one's taken us up on that yet, that that's a city lot that okay. can be well, used. Okay, we weren't aware of that. When we put our request in in January, we'll ask for some of that. And we'll continue to work with Fathoms. We're not trying to push them out. We're trying to make them condensed a little more. Instead of having all their vendors spread out and use all of Bay Street, we're trying to work with them. I've met with Sharon quite a few times, and we're trying to work out all those things. But Great place in that gravel lot for them, I think. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Anything, anything else? Okay. Thank you for coming. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, we are on to our first business item, number 7A, a second reading and adoption of an ordinance amending the 2016 budget, purchasing of a city hall annex, <clears throat> funding certain improvements and furnishings. Mr. Martin. Uh, thank you, Mayor Patonsu, members of the Port Orchard City Council, citizens of Port Orchard. Actions involving amendments to the budget take two readings. This is a second reading of an ordinance amending ordinance number 3115, adopting the 2016 budget. This is a second budget amendment in 2016. The city budget is written to capture revenue and expenses over the fiscal year. During the year, changes to the budget in both revenue and expenditures need to be recognized by budget amendment. This budget amendment ordinance recognizes the desire to acquire, improve, and furnish an office building located at 720 Prospect Street, Port Orchard, Washington, not anticipated at the time of adoption of the 2016 budget. In recognition of evidence of workspace overcrowding in City Hall, the city engaged a consultant to conduct a workspace needs assessment. Based upon their analysis, there is a need for additional workspace due to increases in activity caused by recent annexations, grant writing, new projects, and increased permitting that results in overcrowding for staff and customer needs. While the needs assessment was underway, a commercial building in close proximity to City Hall became available for purchase. The building, a former law office, was surveyed by staff to determine its usefulness in fulfilling the need for additional office space. The building appears adequate for occupancy by the Department of Community Development. Before final purchase, the city will conduct a due diligence as outlined in the real estate purchase and sale agreement. Funds to acquire and purchase the building will be from the real estate excise tax fund number 109. Improvements and furnishings are anticipated from current expense fund number 001 and cumulative reserve for equipment replacement fund number 303. 
and I'll, uh, for fiscal impact, I will read into the records uh, 241500 from the real estate excise tax fund number 109, 58500 from the general fund number 001, and $12,700 for the community cumulative reserve for equipment replacement. Thank you. And uh, if you drive by that building, you look at the front of it and you go, my goodness, it's not very big. So I, we had a drawing prepared that Thomas Hunter prepared for us, and then I threw some proposed uses for the different spaces. So just wanted to uh, give you guys a kind of an idea of what we're buying. And very easily, we can get 10 employees in there, and there's five parking stalls out back, buildings roughly 3,000 square feet. So. Mr. Clausen. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt an ordinance amending the 2016 budget for the city of Port Orchard. Second. Motion and a second by uh, Mr. Kachari. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Hearing none, motion carries. Okay, we are on to 7B, adoption of resolution number 060-16, approving contract number 063-16 with N.L. Olson & Associates, Inc. for the Bay Street Pedestrian Pathway, Segment 3, PS&E Environmental. Mr. Dorsey. Oh, microphone helps. Uh, Your Honor and Council Members, on December 27, 2009, the City of Port Orchard into a local agency standard consultant agreement with N.L. Olson Associates, uh, Resolution 101-09, and Contract 0709. For the Bay Street Pedestrian Pathway Project, development of, of the overall plan, specifications, and estimate, PS&E, uh, and to obtain all environmental uh, permit approvals. On December 31st, 2015, after seven supplemental agreements, contract 07109 expired. But the recent $3.5 million construction funding appropriation from the state whereby 500000 has been programmed into the current 2015-17 state budget, specifically for Segment 3. The city must expedite the preparation of the Segment 3 only, add ready PS&E, plan specs and estimate, <clears throat> and environmental permitting. To do so, a request for sole source consultant services with Anna Olson Associates was recently submitted and approved by the Department of Transportation Local Programs. The city's public work staff has received a proposal from Anna Olson Associates in the amount of $15,450 for the Segment 3 Ad Ready PS&E and Environmental a Hydraulic Project Approval Permitting. A Management Reserve Fund of $4,550 has also been added. For the 2017 Construction Administration Construction Management Services, the city will need to utilize the MRSC consultant roster in accordance with MR, or RCW 39.80 or provide the services in-house. Staff recommends adoption of resolution number 060-16, thereby approving contract number 063-16 with Anna Olson Associates for the Segment 3 only Bay Street Pedestrian Pathway Project, Ad Ready, ps &E, and Environmental Permitting in an amount not to exceed $20,000 in documenting the professional services procurement procedures. And uh, Council Member <coughs> Lucarelli stepped out of the room and recused herself because her uh, spouse works for N.L. Olson. So, oh. Is there a motion? Mr. Donovan? Uh, Mayor, I move to ad adopt resolution number 060-16, thereby approving contract number C063-16 with N.L. Olson Associates incorporated for the segment three only Bay Street pedestrian pathway project add ready PS and E environmental HPA permitting in the amount not to exceed $20,000 and documenting the professional services procurement procedures. Second. Motion and a second discussion. Mr. Chang. I just need to make the disclaimer that even though I'm a DOT employee, I am not involved in any of the um, arrangements for this. I do not benefit materially from the arrangement. Uh, however, I would be happy to recuse myself if anyone in the audience or council feels that I should be excused from making a vote on this. Does anyone feel Mr. Chang needs to be recuse himself? 
No. Yeah, seeing none, I think you're all right. Okay. Other questions or comments? Okay, we'll be voting on uh, resolution number 060-16, approving a contract with NL, Oso NL Olson Associates for segment three, Bit pedestrian, Bay Street Pedestrian Pathway. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none? Go get the Ms. Lucarelli. We're on to 7D, C. Uh, a C. approval of a contract. No. 7C. Actually. 7C, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Uh, adoption <coughs> resolution number 067-16, approving contract number 071-16 with Berger Abram Inc. for the Tremont Street Widening Construction Phase Professional Services and Procurement Procedure. Procedure documentation. Mr. Dorsey. Thank you, Your Honor, Council Members. On June 30th, 2016, the City of Port Orchard Public Works Department selected six qualified firms from the city's current MRSC professional services roster for the subcategory streetscapes, improvements, constructability reviews, federal, state, local agency permitting, roadway, bikeway, and walkway design, civil engineering, construction management, environmental engineering. <coughs> transit planning and design, transportation, traffic, landscaping, planning and design and project management. <clears throat> On July 6, 2016, a request for qualifications was sent to six qualified firms. And by the July 22, 2016 deadline, two statement of qualifications were received, whereby the selection panel reviewed, scored and ranked the two firm statement of qualifications. On August 9th, 2016, pursuant to WashDOT local agency guidelines manual, the selection panel held interviews with two consulting firms, then scored and ranked the two firms, and then based upon the qualifications received and the interview process, selected the Berger ABAM Exotech project team for the project and commenced immediately with contract negotiations. On August 18th, the city's public works department received a proposal from the Berger ABAM Exodec project team of $279,192, <clears throat> which includes a $25,300 management reserve fund. Please note, this activity to complete the ad-ready PS&E and environmental permitting within 2016 is required to meet the timeline requirements of the Transportation Improvement Board Rapid Action Program. The construction administration construction management phase will commence in 2017, initiated via supplemental agreement, and will be funded through grant construction funding. Staff recommends adoption of resolution 067-16, thereby approving contract 071-16 with Berger Abam for the Tremont Street widening construction phase, final ad ready PSE environmental permitting in the amount not to exceed $279,192 and documenting the professional services procurement procedures. And I'd like to have you look at the fiscal impact so that everybody's clear. And we did talk, at, talk to this this morning at the finance committee meeting. The city is currently working through the PSRC project tracking exemptions request process to transfer the needed funding from the city's current Tremont right-of-way fund to the PE fund. Working through WashDOT, $50,000 is allowed to be transferred administratively. And I actually submitted that application at the end of today. Um, a recommendation by the PSRC Transportation Policy Board on September 8, 2016, with final action taken by the PSRC Executive Board on September 22nd, 2016, will determine whether or not the remaining $229,192 will be funded with current grant funding or by the city. Please note, all values depicted are total amounts with actual amounts allocated at 86.5% grant, 13.5% city match. A budget amendment will be required. Councilmember Kuchiardi. 
Thank you. I move to adopt resolution number 067-16, thereby approving contract number C071-16 with Berger Abelme <coughs> for the Tremont Street widening construction phase, final ad ready PSE environmental permitting in the amount not to exceed $279,192 and documenting the professional services procurement procedures. Second. A motion and a second. Discussion? Okay. I just need to remind everyone in case they've forgotten that I am still a DOT employee. And, uh, <laughs> I am, however, not prejudiced by this action, but I would be happy to recuse myself if anyone suspects that I would be partial. Uh, I do not benefit materially from it in any way. So. Does anyone feel Mr. Chang needs to recuse himself this time? Not this time. You're stuck with us. <laughs> so, Mr. Clausen. Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to share with the council the discussion that we had this morning in regards to this and just uh, make sure that the council understands that it really is kind of a timing issue for this. Um, there is, I mean, it would be nice if we could wait till this goes through the PSRC process to make sure that it's going to be done, but unfortunately to meet the uh, Transportation Improvement Board's timeline, we, we don't have that luxury. So there is a chance, um, although we hope to be remote, but there is a chance that PSRC does not approve this and we would be faced with funding this ourselves. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of this. We had the discussion this morning at the Finance Committee meeting and uh, unless the members contradict me, I think we were comfortable with moving forward with doing this simply to be able to meet that deadline for TIB, which is a very large portion of potential funding. Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Council Member Ashby. Yes, uh, there's the money issue of this resolution. It's also the approval of Berger ABAM. And I did sit in on that interview and I felt very strongly that they were the most qualified to complete our Tremont project. So I'm very comfortable approving them as the firm to do this work for us. I would also say in um, looking at the dollar amount that we're talking about and in round numbers, it's basically $300,000 in round numbers. That number has always been part of our Tremont budget. This is not money above what we've already considered. This is just part of that. Again, it's um, a timing issue and a cash flow issue. When we do go out to our bond, even if PSRC does not um, allow us to transfer right of way money to PSNE money, um, we would reimburse ourselves with our bond money. So it, again, it's just a timing issue. And the treasurer assured us that we could cash flow it through the end of the year. So I'm comfortable supporting this. Council Member Diener, do you have a question? Or yeah, comment? I'm comfortable supporting it, but I'm wondering what will the PSRC executive board be talking about to help determine whether that would be funded there, through grant funding or whether we would have to eat that? There, there um, it's really considered three different buckets. There's the, the the, the design phase, there's the right-of-way phase, and then there's the construction phase. And they have a policy that if your award is one of those phases, you can't j we can, we're only allowed to move administratively from one phase to the other uh, $50,000. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, we, there's, they have a process that you have to go through to get the board's approval over there. If they don't approve it, then it goes back into our countywide dollars over here. There is an opportunity if a second bite, if they don't approve it this direction, we proceed to, to funding into constructing the project that we could uh, move this from right of way then to construction, which is, I understand, viewed more favorably. This is viewed as moving backwards and we're gonna have to explain. Uh, we have good reasoning. Um, the storm manuals changed. Um, you know, it's a timing issue with the TIB grant. Uh, Mark's worked backwards from the award date that we have to have, and we needed this on this agenda this evening, and we couldn't wait for answers from PSRC. So, do they have approval criteria, or is it just sort of a general discussion? 
No, there is. Um, the Transportation Policy Board and the Executive Committee at the end of 2014, I believe, um, created an exception policy. Jurisdictions were regularly moving money around mm -hmm. and playing with time issues, moving their, um, um, anyway, moving time around as well as money around. And PSRC said, no, that's not manageable. You know, when you, um, when you obligate, you obligate and you have to adhere to that time frame. And they fund by phase. And so this particular phase for the city of Port Orchard, I believe, was what, in 2008? 2008. In 2008 was for right-of-way acquisition. Now, we very diligently didn't use all of that grant at that time for right-of-way acquisition. So that money is sitting there, and we're hoping to be able to use it to do the updates that... Right. Berger ABAM needs to do, and if 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 we're unsuccessful with that exception, then we will move it to construction. And if it doesn't go to construction, it will go back into the KRCC countywide pool of funds. Okay. All right. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Okay. Hearing none, we'll be uh, voting on adoption of a resolution number 067-16, approving a contract number 071-16 with Berber, Berger Abram, Inc. for the treatment widening construction phase professional services. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Now we're on to 7D. Uh, this approval of a contract with Messenger Corporation for fabrication and installation of wayfinding signs. Mr. Bond. Yes, thank you. On June 2nd, 2016, the City of Port Orchard Public Works Department issued a request for proposals to six companies listed on the 2016 Public Works Small Works roster. By, June 29th, two, by the June 29th, 2016 deadline, only two bids were received as shown on the attached bid tabulations. The M3 Messenger Corporation bid was determined to be the lowest responsive bid at $91,525.40, including applicable taxes. The Economic Development and Tourism Committee reviewed the bids received at their July 18th meeting and recommended that the City Council award a contract for the Port Orchard Wayfinding Signs Project. Staff recommends that the, that the City Council authorize the Mayor to execute contract number 29-16 with M3 Messenger Corporation for the wayfinding sign contract in the amount not to exceed $91,525.40 with the contract term beginning on September 1st, 2016 and ending November 9th, 2016. Ms. Ashby. I would move to authorize the mayor to execute a contract with M3 Messenger Corporation for the Port Orchard wayfinding in the amount not to exceed $91,525.40, including applicable taxes. Second. Motion a second. Discussion of this item? It's been a long time coming. I'm it has been. I'm glad we're uh, finally going to get these uh, done and in, in, on, out on the ground. So, okay, we will be voting on uh, um, approval of a contract with Messenger Corporation for the fabrication and installation of wayfinding signs. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We are on to 7E, approval of a change order to contract number 022-16 with Jones & Jones for the design of McCormick Village Park Phase 2 improvements. Mr. Bond. Yeah, and before I get into my report, um, NL Olson is a subcontractor under this change order. Um, just FYI. Um, the City Council in May 2016 reviewed various alternatives for the design of McCormick Village Park Phase 2 improvements. The Council ultimately decided to move forward with a plan to include a water spray, spray play area, an off-leash dog park, and expanded parking. Because these items were not in the original design contract, a change order is required. In addition, the original contract didn't include the preparation of a stormwater analysis for compliance with the city's adopted stormwater manual. This work has been included in the change order for a total increase to contract 02216 of $33,355. The original contract was not to exceed $151,500 and was subsequently amended in change order number one to add $4,100 and, 
$4,138.20 in additional survey work. Change order one was needed because the city didn't require as-built drawings for phase one improvements and the original plans could not be relied upon for phase two design work. Council approval is required for change order number two because the amount exceeds $25,000. Staff recommends that the city council authorize change order number two to contract 2216 in an amount not to exceed $33,355. I will recuse myself on this one also. Okay. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Mr. Mayor? Yes. I move to approve change order number two to contract 22-16 in the amount of $33,355. So motion. There's a motion and a second for Mr. Clausen. Discussion? Mr. Chang. Um, I will support this um, change order, although I just wanted to raise my personal reservations. I do like water features. Uh, the weekend of the cruise, I was actually out of state, and I saw two different water features. One was in, well, one was in the state in Vancouver, Estershort Park. Another was in uh, Rancho Palos Verdes in the Promenade Shopping Center, where they had people walking through the fountains. And I thought about it, but I was fully clothed at the time, <laughs> even though it was 80 That's degrees. The good news. <laughs> well, um, so I love having a water feature, and I like the idea that we're having it. I'm still not sure this location is the ideal location for one, but I will support the, moving forward with this plan. Yes, Mr. Diener. This location, in terms of in the park itself, or this location well, in the city? This location in the city, okay. I would have preferred a water feature in a more central location like our downtown core. That would be my personal preference because we have more people who can get to it through parking and public transportation. I'm concerned that we have a very exciting amenity in what could be a borderline neighborhood park versus a regional park. I don't know that we have the parking to support a great deal of traffic <clears throat> there, but that's just my concern. Mr. Diener? And then I have to ask again if there's been any communication from the Bremerton developer about perhaps supporting this project. Nothing yet. Okay. Thank you. But that project has not moved forward, has it? We've been going back and forth on transportation issues with them, and so um, we're, we're actively communicating, but we're sorting out um, transportation mitigation right now more so than park mitigation. Hopefully more to come. Other questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll be approving change order to contract number 022-16 with Jones & Jones for the design of McCormick Village Park improvement, phase two improvements. All in favor, say aye. 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 <coughs> Hearing none, the motion carries. Mark, do I get Cindy? Thank you. We will give it just a second here. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 7F, setting a public hearing date for an animal uh, variance. Clerk Reinerson. Good evening, Mayor, Council. So on August 8, 2016, the city clerk's office received a request for an animal variance from Mr. and Mrs. Howard. The variance request is requesting to have a fourth dog and for it to be licensed with the city. Pursuant to Port Orchard Municipal Code 7.01.010, subsection 1, defines an animal as an animal is a female, spayed female, male or neutered male animal, including any goat, horse, mule, cattle, swine, or other domestic livestock used or raised on a farm and any living vertebrae creature, including reptiles or birds, and excluding any marine mammals, fish, or man. Animals also include dogs and cats, unless specifically excluded. Mm -hmm. However, Port Orchard Municipal Code 7.12.010 only requires that dogs and cats to be licensed over the age of six months. So, in Port Orchard Municipal Code 7.12.010, Point zero oh nine oh subsection 2 states that a request for a variance from ownership restrictions as stated above may be submitted to the city council upon receipt of a completed variance application the city clerk shall set a date for public hearing before the city council notice of such public hearing shall be given to all <coughs> adjacent property owners of the subject property not less than 10 days or more than 30 days prior to the date of the hearing a variance shall be granted when a, the strict enforcement of the provisions of this chapter will create an undue hardship and the variance will not create a health or safety hazard. 
In addition, um, staff has provided to the council, which was submitted by the applicant, a petition signed by six of her neighbors um, requesting signing that they had no objections to the animal variance. Staff recommends that the council set a public hearing for an animal variance at the September 13, 2016 council meeting. Mr. Mayor, yes. I move to authorize the city clerk to set the public hearing date of an animal variance for September 13th, 2016, and to notify all adjacent property owners as outlined in Port Orchard Municipal Code 7.12.090. Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? Oh, yes, Mr. Beener. I, I think it would be prudent to contact the applicant and advise them of the tests that need to be demonstrated under 712-0902-A. The strict enforcement of the provisions of this chapter will create an undue hardship. And I don't want to prejudge what we've got in front of us, but it doesn't, to me, seem like they've demonstrated that through the submission of their letter alone. So um, I think it would be worthwhile for them to take a harder look at what they're asking for. In defense for the applicant, I know that um, these are existing animals that they have in their household and that they are in the process of building a new home outside of the city. Mm -hmm. So this isn't a long-term situation. But, uh, no, and, and I guess all I'm looking for is for something in the record that would defend whatever decision comes out of this. Other questions or comments? Okay, we'll be f voting on setting a uh, public hearing date for an animal dog variance, which I believe is September 13th. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. <clears throat> hearing has been set. We are on to 7G, meeting minutes from August 9th. So a motion to approve those minutes. To approve the minutes submitted from August 9th. Is there a second? And under discussion, I assume, Spicarelli, you're going to uh, you're going to abstain. And other comments? <laughs> and voting on the minutes from August 9th. All in favor, say aye. 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 And one abstention. Minutes are approved. We are on to item 7H, change order for the decant facility, <coughs> which is placed on the dais in front of us. Mr. Dorsey. Thank you, Your Honor, Council Members, and I'd like to apologize to the Mayor for dropping something on the dais without getting his prior consent, but as you know, this is construction season, and this was a very last-minute uh, item, so we did discuss it briefly at the Utility Committee, um, but I wasn't able to catch the Mayor to brief him, so again, my apologies. Um, so the Port Orchard Regional DeCamp Facility Retrofit Project was awarded $869,000 in construction funding from the Department of Co uh, Ecology. JMG Construction LLC bid the work at $768,704.19. Due to changes in site conditions, the city has already issued one change order for removing additional trees to enable construction of the facility and remove move of dirt that was filled from an old garbage dump area. But during the process, both the Public Works Director and the Mayor's change order authorities have been expended. Before you tonight is a change order to bring the electrical for this facility into compliance and underground the electrical to the site. Also, the Budget Authority still has $39,045.40 remaining. Staff respectfully request Council's authorization or the Council to authorize the Mayor and the Public Works Director to manage this project up to the Budget Authority amount with reports back to the council at the next available meeting after funds have been issued. So, staff recommends the council authorize the mayor to issue change order number two for the $36,894 to the regional decant facility contract. Additionally, staff met with the Department of Ecology on Friday, August 19th at the site, and ecology staff recommended the city basically expend all funds awarded for this project to ensure future funding from the legislature for projects. So we have two motions before you. One motion is to move to authorize the mayor to sign change order two for the $36,894 for the regional camp facility or move to authorize the mayor to sign the change order number two for $38,894 for the camp facility and to allow the mayor and the public works director to manage the construction contract up to the budget authority allotted within the storm drainage utility budget for the project. <clears throat> really? 
I move to authorize the mayor to sign change order number two for $38,894 for the regional decant facility and manage the construction contract up to the budget authority allotted in the storm drainage utility budget for the project. Second it. A motion and a second. Mr. Kachari. Uh, was there a Scrivener's error in the uh, the or the 38894 <coughs> versus the 36894 she read into the, oh. the motion? It should yes. be 36. Thank you for catching that. So it is the $36,894. Yes, which is referenced above. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other comments? I, yes, yes. Okay. we had Mr. Clausen seconded it. Other comments or questions? Okay. All in favor of change, the change order number two for the regional decant facility and to allow the, the mayor and public works director to manage the construct, construction contract up to the budget authority allowed in the, strain, allowed in the storm drainage utility. And all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We are to council, let's see here, council committee reports, I guess. And then Mr. Clausen. Well, this morning we had a finance committee meeting uh, where the treasurer provided us with the uh, sales tax revenue report as well as uh, a report that he's now providing us on essentially the different uh, uh, accounts within the uh, overall city budget. The sales tax is uh, continuing to come in uh, much better than we had anticipated when we built the 2016 budget. Right now, I think uh, year to date, if I'm reading this correctly, we're about seven and three quarter percent higher than uh, what we had budgeted for, which is good news. The read money uh, is coming in real estate excise tax uh, is still coming in better than uh, uh, last year so we're we're in good shape there in both accounts and as far as our various account balances uh, we're pretty much right on target so uh, we were pretty pleased to go through that <clears throat> we also learned that uh, the uh, staff uh, has contacted the firm that performed our latest or our last salary survey and that that firm is willing to uh, do an update to our to the work that he had completed uh, when he did his initial survey for us uh, so I don't remember that there was a dollar amount but it's going to be significantly less than of course the full-fledged salary survey so we talked about the some of the actions that we took here tonight. Uh, the Berger ABAM was one of them, the Tremont issue. We spent quite a bit of time talking about that and the impacts that that would have. Uh, we did also talk about the uh, Bay Street pedestrian path and some of the efforts that are going along there and some changes that uh, are occurring down at the DeKalb Street waterway project where uh, there was an issue of that project has seen some savings in uh, what was it mark five thousand some odd dollars if I remember correctly and then they've had some uh, added expenses over and above what was anticipated but to this point uh, they're still within the budgeted amount for the project so the question that was posed to the committee was whether or not the mayor and public works director gets the credit for that savings so that they still have some authority and change orders if necessary and the committee agreed that we looked at it as a total project and if the project had savings then it's still within the budget so we we basically gave the mayor and public works director the, the ability to go beyond or take advantage of that savings so and then the mayor uh, basically shared with us the uh, kind of the status of the ILA between the fire district and the city and that that's going to be coming soon 
and some discussions that he's had with the county for them to actually perform some of the uh, responsibilities that the fire district will not be able to perform if we move forward. So that was pretty much it. Okay. Economic development and tourism? Yes, we will be meeting on September 12th at 9 o'clock. And we have invited um, Patty Graf Hope from Visit Kitsap Peninsula to come and educate us on tourism and how it works within the state, the demographics of Kitsap County's tourism, and just to give us a basic um, tutorial on tourism. We've also invited um, our local chamber and the Port Orchard Bay Street Association, Fathoms of Fun, and the other organizations that do events for us. So that, again, that will be on September 12th. There will be other agenda items, but that's our guest speaker that day. Committee. We met just prior to this meeting, and uh, one of our discussion items was daycare sewerage fees. Uh, we've had a request from a daycare or two and um, to look into the fairness of the fees, and we will be addressing that in the future, taking it to work study when we have just a little bit more information um, about what the surrounding communities are doing to handle this. Also, we discussed the, the decant facility, and that piece was just presented to all of you. We are also we were introduced to the sewer water capital facilities charge calculation, which is something um, that we need further information on, and we will be bringing more information to all of you in a work study as well with that. Um, we continued a discussion about well number nine again, <laughs> more information forthcoming. Um, and our next meeting will be September 19th at 9.30 a.m. in the Carolyn Powers Conference Room. Okay. We're on to uh, Sewer Advisory. Do you have a meeting? The next Sewer Advisory meeting will be October 19th at 6.30 p.m. And that will be taking place. Uh, <coughs> the agenda needs to be corrected, please. It says that it's going to be at the South Kitsap Water Reclamation Facility. It's actually going to be at the West Sound Utility District, 2924 Southeast Lund Avenue. Okay, we're uh, on to land use. So our next scheduled meeting is September 21st at 7.30 a.m. We don't have an agenda just yet. Okay, we are to lodging tax advisory. Mr. Jane? Nothing to report yet. Okay, coming soon though. Yes. Okay, anything from Chimes and Light? Sounds like a Christmas tree? That's a lot of news. Uh, we are, our next meeting is Monday, September 19th, and that's at 3.30 p.m. Also, I might as well scoot right into the Development Regulation Ad Hoc Committee. Met Tuesday, that was August 16th at 3 o'clock. We were mostly discussing boundary line adjustments, and um, we have a lot of work to still do on that topic. Mm -hmm. Contentious meeting. Yes, Outside, it was. Outside uh, agencies, I know Mr. Clausen and I were at the CADA meeting, a quarterly meeting today. It was a very interesting uh, meeting. Uh, had a number of, uh, of uh, guest speakers there and, and their efforts. Uh, to attract business uh, to the Kitsap Peninsula, in particular the industrial park. Uh, any other outside agencies anybody want to report on? No. Um, KRCC did not meet in August. We will be meeting again on September 6th, I think, whatever the Tuesday is after Labor Day. Okay. Yes. For future agendas, the Finance Committee did set their next meeting date for September 27th, 7.30 a.m. here at City Hall. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. On to uh, report of the mayor. Got to, uh, won't talk about the car club here. That was covered, but some of you missed out that on that hot day. There was a dunk tank down there, and <laughs> uh, Council Member Donlan and I uh, got dunked a few times. So if, uh, if you're looking to get dunked next year, I'm sure that uh, I'll give up my spot. <clears throat> three uh, three balls for a dollar. I thought that was a little inexpensive for how often you went down. And uh, if you were all oh, this, about this high or smaller, even if you missed three times, you got to go over and hit the target. So <laughs> you got wet a lot. So mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, 737 Bay Street. Now we've got uh, almost done with the siding down there. There's the next challenge is the if you've noticed that the tip and the overhang and uh, engineer is designed to fix for that 
um, and the contractor should be on that uh, piece soon, but they can't really work out on that front corner safely until that's been corrected. Uh, can't wait for the plywood to come off and some paint to go on it, uh, but the plywood is a safety railing for the workers up there right now. So uh, then I'll be on to, I guess, the next challenge is to help the landlord find a tenant maybe for that building. So I've got a few ideas there. Um, it's a really nice article in Friday's paper about the homeless ad hoc committee. And uh, um, I've had from that article probably a half a dozen people. I already had a committee of about six or eight people and about a half a dozen people reached out to me from that. So we've got a very robust group. We're going to have a uh, August 30th at 4 o'clock here in the council chambers. I hope not to go more than about an hour because we've got a council meeting that evening. And uh, everyone is welcome, but if we have a quorum, uh, we'll Did just need to notice that. Message? Yes, and, okay. and he, that gentleman is in. So Good. had a lot of people reach out to me. Um, just had to get your thoughts here. December, um, we need to have two business meetings, but one of them's uh, during Christmas week. So I thought maybe we should take our work study and make it a business meeting. Then we would have meetings the 13th and the 20th. Uh, provided we can get our all of our done. work done, so maybe as we get into October, November, we'll touch base back in. But does anybody have any objection to? I will just announce right now that I will be out of town that week, okay. uh, the Tuesday after Christmas. <coughs> yeah, after the 27th, yeah, when correct. we would, that's, which is the meeting I'm proposing, we move mm -hmm. ahead a week. So, uh, no objections to working towards that goal. No, nope. I didn't think anybody would. Um, onto the website, uh, we are looking to launch the test page on September 12th and go live with it on September 26th. You have got an email a while back. That link works, and we're constant. Janine's been working really hard on it. She's constantly updating it. Really like your feedback. Uh, in particular, get your feedback after we uh, launch the tense test page. So it'll be, we'll make some noise about that, a press release, and... Um, also get it emailed back out to you again so it's it's coming along well you know a few weeks back we voted on the changes to the parking going from monthly to weekly and the increases we I talked to uh, Commander Schuster today we didn't want to pay the company they were coming to do some programming changes anyway those changes happened today so the new rates or in effect as of really tomorrow, and we've put notices on the machines uh, to that effect. So I just want everybody to know that in case your email or your phone rang. Um, agenda format, did that work for everybody? Um, so next, yes, if, if you're paperless. Uh, so next month, the goal is there will only be one, we're only gonna create one format, which is the bookmark format, um, if, unless anybody objected. So, and it prints just fine, and. You won't, any, won't notice any difference uh, if you've got paper. Um, that's all I have. Just a reminder, we're going to have an executive session after citizen comments on a number of topics from labor negotiations to uh, potential litigation. So on the staff uh, reports, Mr. Dorsey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So Public Works is very busy this time of year, uh, actually trying to find time to work on the mayor's budget, um, but at this point, uh, we've been doing a lot of work ourselves up in the public workshop. We've hired additional staff that's allowed us to do a lot of these tasks ourselves, and so that's cutting down on contracting time, and so uh, that's a benefit, and we've also seen savings. Uh, the most recent projects, as you know, were the 166 ditching that turned out really well. Um, we did the sinkhole repair down by Bay and Arnold. Uh, that went really well, all in all. And then we'll be paving in front of the Velist property. Uh, we weren't really satisfied with the the quality of the, the paving along that new sidewalk, so we saw a cut in that. We'll be paving that on Thursday. Um, and then we'll also be replacing the curb ramp, uh, working with the contractor, uh, we'll be doing all the prep work and then we'll hire somebody to come in and just do the actual flat work um, for the southeast corner so that we have ADA compliant 
crossing from the list over to a cross climb to um, Kitsap on the east side. Um, John mentioned earlier the DeKalb Pier project. I don't have final resolution at this point, but after a conversation with the project engineer, we think that the outcome is going to be much better than what was discussed at Finance Committee, but instead of misspeaking, I'll wait until we get the final numbers. But there were some line items that hadn't been utilized, so we think we're going to have a better outcome there. <coughs> and as we talked earlier, we're moving forward to the camp facility. Um, segment 3 for Bay Street, we'll be moving forward with that design so that we can have that done this year and go to add hoping to go to construction uh, in coordination with uh, the adjacent commercial redevelopment. So we're trying to stay to the, stick to that timeline. And we talked about Tremont and needing to get moving on that ad ready ps &E. So yeah, so we're, we're very busy. Treasurer Martin. Thank you. I just might uh, raise one point uh, that we haven't talked about, and that is on the LTAC um, committee, we are going to move to a biennial budget. So, uh, you know, there is an opportunity to budget over a two-year period on the awards. So I know that hasn't been discussed, but I just want to plant that seed um, if, in fact, you wanted to go that, uh, have a process that that went over a two-year period, which I checked and some cities do choose to do. So, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Mr. Bond. Um, the comprehensive plan appeal period ended today, and so um, as far as we know, we have not received any appeals, um, although I don't know if you've gotten through your inbox just yet, but I, I think we're, we're in the clear on that. Um, I also have a communication from uh, PSRC that our plan will go forward for certification at the Growth Management Policy Board in October, and so that should be a full certification. And uh, she said that we're the only uh, city in the county that is at that st that stage right now. So that's uh, that's good. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. That's huge. Yes. Skates. Yes, I just wanted to uh, point out that recently I was asked to weigh in on an Open Public Meetings Act issue, in particular, um, the uh, noticing, uh, providing public notice of events that city council members are attending where a quorum is going to be present. Um, as you know, the Open Public Meetings Act requires that if a quorum is present and city businesses is conducted, then that has to be noticed to the public. And out of an abundance of caution, the city has been in recent years uh, noticing anything that the city, the city council members attend where a quorum is present. Um, but it, it's it's not really necessary if, if, if uh, city business is not going to be conducted. So I think the, the prudent thing would be to continue to notice those um, meetings where we're meeting with, with another uh, agency or entity that we do business with, where city business might come up, but uh, uh, social events, things like that. Um, I think it, it would be good to remind people every time that, that city, city business should not be discussed, but, um, but I don't believe it's necessary to provide public notice every time for that type of event. Is, are you comfortable with that? I'm it, totally comfortable with it. Yeah, board with it that. Save a lot of emails out to you guys trying to track various social events, yep. whether or not you intend to go or not. So, so we will discontinue that practice. So Clerk Reinerson. Um, so I received the first invoice from Kitsap Harbor Tours and we're under budget so far. Um, we just received the one invoice, I believe, from the May that we were open, all the, that we started the, the run all the way to, I think, first part of August. So, so we're good. Um, I don't think I need to come back and ask for additional funds out of the city's main budget, I guess. So we're good there. Um, and then the other thing is I will be out of the office on Thursday attending the AWC RMSA executive board mem member I didn't speak board meeting. So as some of you know, I'm on the board of directors for our risk management services for the city. And then somehow I got roped into being also on the AWC's risk management, um, or excuse me, the AWC's investment pool. So I will be there all day. And the benefit of me being on at least both of the committees is I will be able to report back to the treasurer on what the recommendation from the risk management is for our fee for 2017. Um, Significant and hopefully 2018. correct. Yeah. So that's where I'll be Thursday. And then 
I think that's all I have. Okay. See, Mr. Hunter, uh, sharply dressed in the back row, do you have anything uh, from the public works forum and sewer water manager to report? My okay. Pleasure to have you here. Okay, we will uh, move on to uh, our second public comment period. And then we should, can I, any item? Ms. Harmon, go ahead. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking about before I came down was that um, you're having a committee get together on the homeless, and of all the people on it, I didn't see mention that any homeless people would be included. And I truly believe that a lot of programs fail because you don't get input from the homeless. And I think it would be nice if you selected a few people that you think that could really contribute that are in that position to be part of it. So, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Other comments? Mr. Whittleton? Um, I was gonna ask this morning at the, at the Finance Committee and I forgot and I was wondering if, if you could break down the sales tax that we've received downtown and see if there's been a pokey effect or <laughs> increase because of that. Um, I know, I don't know when the last time was that I can go downtown in the middle of the week and see 75, 80 people wandering around. Nobody's looking where they're going, but there's still people, and I know uh, I have to stop and get ice cream. It's a requirement. Uh, you can't go past there after, after 6 o'clock and not stop and get ice cream. I, I think that should be an ordinance, by the way. But anyway. All right. Thank you for your comment. Other comments? Yes, Ms. Middleton. Brandy has a picture for me to show to you. Okie dokie. <laughs> this is not far from our home. It's at the base of Mitchell. And as you know, I've been pushing for a derelict building ordinance. And this building's been there for quite a while, and I have talked with code enforcement about it, and there have been people who have talked about developing it. But um, at this present moment, that piece of plywood has been pried away, and it's been that way for quite a while because it happened before I hurt my leg. Um, and I'm still wondering where the draft of the derelict building ordinance is if it's totally tabled. Are we going to make any adjustments to that? I'm really grateful to see um, 737, the building formerly known as Myrie's, um, improving as we go along. Uh, it was my understanding that nothing was going to happen in the back, but I think we heard that at a council meeting, and now it looks like they are adding some siding up there. But I'm just wondering what we have to protect ourselves against these situations arising over and over again. Because even if we fix the old Myrie's building and fix some of the other buildings, if anything happens in our city, like we had to buy the property, you know, anything happens in our city, we don't have anything with any teeth in it unless it's dangerous. But if it's an eyesore and generally bringing the condition of the city down, we just have to deal with it. And I know Portland, some of the other buildings, or some of the other cities, they have structure that allows them to be able to throw some weight into something if it has extended over a certain period of time. And so I just urge you to revisit that situation. Um, even to the point of vacant windows, um, Bobby's done a great job with filling some of those windows that are vacant, and it looks so much better, but some buildings have a requirement that after a certain period of time, if there's a vacant storefront, they either have to do something with it or you start occurring fines. And as terrible as that sounds, it's really not right for these other businesses to have to to have to buck up under this. So that's my concern. And that really is my concern. This is another one. Um, I think it's a pocket park and I called today, but I haven't gotten an answer yet. But I thought the city was maintaining that and that's also on Mitchell. And um, I couldn't get in there with a weed whacker, um, but there's cans and all kinds of stuff, and it, it just brings the vibe down. And it's right at the intersection of Morton and um, Mitchell, so it's pretty close to downtown. 
So thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Other comments? Mary? I was out of line the first time, but I didn't notice on the back of the agenda that they we're going to have an open uh, agenda. But I still feel very, very strongly, and everyone I talk to feels very strongly, about not putting the grass in place of a parking spots downtown. There was an article in the Independent this week about that, and the guy said it was really stupid. And I, I said to myself, yep, you're right. So I wish you would take that really under consideration and not cut off any parking places downtown. It's so important. If we're going to have business and we're going to have customers, we need a place to park. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your comment. Bobby, you're the only one left. Nothing, no, no, nothing this evening? <laughs> All right. All right. We are going to head into executive session pursuant to RCW 42.30.110. And... Uh, dealing with labor negotiations and uh, potential litigation. We plan to take no action after the meeting, or after the executive session. I think we'll need um, 20 minutes.